I woke up that Tuesday morning with a sense of dread, knowing that today was the day I had to face the consequences of a peculiar side effect from the medication I'd been prescribed. Uncontrollable gas. One of those less serious yet more annoying and downright hilarious side effects. Lately, it had reached new heights of audacity, and today, I couldn't escape it. Given my usual work from home setup, I thought I could spare my co-workers and myself the symphony of embarrassing sounds and odors. So, I asked if I could work from home on my office day, citing vague side effects as my reason. I could practically hear my boss sighing through the phone. You need to come in today, she insisted. We have new people starting, and I told them you'd do a meet and greet. It would look bad if I wasn't there. I hesitated, not entirely convinced, but my boss was persistent. So, I reluctantly took a gas stopping pill and headed into the office. The morning went surprisingly well. I managed to meet the new hires, maintaining a semblance of professionalism despite the internal turmoil. However, just as I was beginning to relax, the gas pill's effects started to wear off around 10 a.m. Panic set in. I couldn't possibly endure a day of meetings and training sessions without my secret weapon against embarrassment. Soon enough, I was informed that I was expected to stay in the training class and shadow the newcomers. It became clear that my boss had an ulterior motive for insisting I come in. Desperate for a private moment, I attempted to find my boss, a classy lady adorned in pearls, to explain my situation. But fate had other plans. She was swiftly whisked away to yet another meeting. As the training progressed, the pressure within me built up and the inevitable became unavoidable. The first few times, I discreetly excused myself from the room, desperately trying to maintain a sense of dignity. However, the constant back and forth became increasingly distracting both for me and the unsuspecting trainees. Eventually, I decided to abandon the futile attempts at discretion. I braced myself and let the gas escape, creating an unintentional symphony of embarrassment in the room filled with about 10 of our newest hires. The reactions ranged from surprised glances to stifled laughter, and I couldn't help but cringe at the absurdity of it all. As the lunch break arrived, I found a private moment to check my messages, only to discover a direct message from my boss. Okay, you can go home. Relief washed over me, mixed with a tinge of embarrassment and uncertainty about the repercussions of my unintentional disruption. Back at home, my faithful dog, who could hold his own in the gas department, greeted me with enthusiasm. It seemed that my boss had realized the severity of the situation and decided to spare the office from any further olfactory assault. Now, as I sat in the comfort of my home, I pondered the fallout I might face the next day at work. Would this incident become the stuff of office legends or would it quietly fade away? Only time would tell. For now, I was content to be home, surrounded by understanding silence and a loyal companion who seemed unfazed by the events of the day as we both continued to gas up our own little sanctuary. Hey guys, so yesterday at work, I had an encounter with a Karen. It's a bit of a long story, so buckle up guys. So for those of you who remember me, I had made a post here a little over a year ago about a guy who wouldn't accept free food and demanded money instead. I have since left that job, and I am now a delivery guy for a pizza franchise that pays significantly more than my barista job. When I changed jobs, I assumed that it would be smooth sailing from there. For a short period of time, it was. Friendly work environment, super chill boss, and to top it all off, the customers were absolutely pleasant. But with all jobs, you are bound to run into a Karen or two. My time came yesterday when a Karen came into our store. So one of my co-workers, who we'll name Steve for obvious reasons, and I were chilling out in the front of the store. Now where I work, the amount of business we get fluctuates. So while we'll be extremely busy one day, we'll be super slow the next. On this particular day, it was slow. Other than a singular delivery order and a couple of carryout orders. So our boss comes into the store and after seeing how slow it was, tells us to feel free to make food for ourselves. Steve and I are stoked since neither of us had eaten in all that day. Steve makes himself a medium pizza with cheese and I make my own pizza. A medium with pepperoni and bacon. We both put our pizzas in the oven and wait. About three minutes after the pizzas go in, the front door of the store dings, signaling that a customer has entered. So right from the moment she walked in, I could tell that this wasn't going to be a pleasant encounter. She sauntered onto the store with a classic Karen hairstyle, a look on her face that said, I'm better than you, and you know it. 
and who I assume was her teenage son in tow. So, I look over at Steve, then back at her. Before I could greet her, she says, I'm picking up an order for Karen. Make it snappy, I don't have all day. So I go over to the heat rack and find her order. That's when I saw on the receipt that the order hadn't been paid for yet. So I put the two pizzas that she ordered on the counter and told her the price. With a huff she paid, and I thought that was the end of it. But no. When it comes to Karen's, when you think it's over and done, they will constantly find a way to continue. So, the lady asked for an extra ranch dipping cup. Now, one of the rules we have about the dipping cups is that we are not allowed to give extra dipping cups to the customers for free. The only time the dipping cups are free is if they actually came with the order, which in this particular case, they didn't. So, I grab the ranch cup, put it on the counter, and I tell her the price, which was literally a measly 69 cents. She looks at me and says, are you kidding me? You can't just give me the cup for free. You have plenty already, to which I responded with, I'm sorry, man, but no, I can't. Now, one thing I've learned from all the other Karen-related stories that I've heard is that Karens absolutely hate being told no for any reason. So when I tell her that I can't give her the cup for free, she started yelling and swearing, saying things like, are you going to charge me to use the bathroom too? Or maybe you're going to make me pay for extra napkins too. At this point, Steve and I are getting pretty annoyed. And that's when my boss, who I found out later on, was actually the Mako of the company, comes in and asks what was going on. As we're explaining what's happening, the Karen suddenly goes completely off topic talking about how our customer service was terrible. She then mentions that she actually owns her own pizza restaurant, where allegedly they make over 500 pizzas per day. I'm not sure if she was being truthful or just blowing smoke, but my boss looks over at her and without skipping a beat says, well, if you own your own restaurant, what the heck are you doing here? Throwing a hissy fit over a 69 cent cup of rant? The store got so quiet that you could practically hear a feather fall. I look over at the Karen's son who is trying his absolute hardest not to laugh. Steve and I were containing our own laughter as well. So then Karen hurls more insults before grabbing her pizzas and leaving the store with her son. Steve and I share a laugh before going back to enjoy our pizzas. Later on that day, the store gets a call. It's the Karen's son, apologizing for how his mother behaved earlier that day. He then explained that she's constantly doing that wherever they go. She loves causing drama and starting trouble for people. I tell him no worries and that I knew what her gameplay was the second she walked in. We chatted for a bit before saying goodbye and ending the call. So, a bit of a happy ending to what was honestly a very amusing and slightly annoying encounter with the Karen. Apparently, a new person moved in below me sometime in December. I, 23 female, was gone for most of December, so I had no idea until I got back home from celebrating the holidays. My first night back, I had a friend spending the night. I'll call her Claire. We weren't being too loud, but we were chatting and catching up. She went to her car to grab something, and an old man stopped to talk to her. I'll call him Richard. He asked her if we were throwing a party. She said no. He then said he kept hearing loud banging sounds and that we needed to be more mindful of the people living below us. Okay. Claire got back and told me what happened and asked if I had spoken to Richard before. I told her I hadn't. Soon afterwards, he knocked on the door. So for some context, I'm neurodivergent. <sighs> A man I don't know knocking repeatedly on my door late at night really freaked me out. I was also wearing pajamas. Because of this, Claire agreed to talk to him for me, which I was thankful for. He went off on her. He said he had been hearing banging sounds for weeks since he's moved in. He keeps hearing weights dropping. I don't lift weights. He hears things drop at midnight and two. Um, he even said that he could hear whenever I flush the toilet. Creepy. Also, I hadn't been home in weeks. At one point during the conversation, my cat tried to escape and I had to run over and grab him. This will be important later. Richard has left me alone for the past two weeks, though sometimes at night while in bed, I would hear banging on the walls or floor. Unfortunately, he came back tonight. I decided I was going to tell him once and for all that I wasn't making noise. It didn't go well. I tried telling him that I'm not the one making noise. He said, yes, you are. I hear sound then. I see you leave in the morning. Then I hear sound again when I see you come home. You drive, type of car, and color, right? What the F? Okay, he's now admitted to watching me, and he knows which car is mine. And I honestly don't know what the F he is hearing in the morning other than me walking and putting on shoes. I'm not an early riser. 
I sleep as late as I can then wake up, get dressed and leave. I'm not doing morning's workouts. He also tried to catch me in a gotcha moment. He said last time I was here, your lady friend said you couldn't come to the door because you weren't dressed, but I saw you come grab your cat. Yes, sir. She was correct. I was wearing pajamas, not clothing I wanted you to see me in. He kept going on about constant banging, saying he needed to be awake at forum for dialysis and that he needed sleep. Then he finally left after saying he's not trying to be a jerk. I'm at a loss. I don't know what banging sounds he's talking about other than me walking and complaining about me flushing the toilet. Seriously? My cat is 18 pounds. Not obese, just massive frame. And he runs and jumps around when he gets zoomy, so I wonder if he's hearing him. Regardless, the apartment allows pets, and Thunder is an ESA. I should be allowed to walk around in my own apartment and flush my damn toilet without worrying I'll piss someone off. I will no longer answer the door if he shows up, but unfortunately, he's admitted to watching me so he knows my schedule. If you don't want to put up with footsteps, animals, and toilet flushing, you should not move into a pet-friendly apartment complex. So there I was, just minding my own damn business, pulling into the gas station to feed my thirsty car. The sun was shining. Birds were chirping. It was a regular day in my life, you know? Little did I know, this day was about to take a wild turn, and not the good kind. I'm standing there, pumping gas and out of nowhere. This tornado of entitlement and bad vibes swoops in front of my car. I'm talking about Karen, the queen of all things annoying. She parks her ride like she owns the damn place, and I'm left staring at her personalized license plate that probably says something like Queen Karen or Princess Pain in the butt. Before I could even process what was happening, she's out of her car, marching towards the convenience store like she's on a mission to ruin someone's day. Spoiler alert. That someone was me. I'm thinking, what the actual heck just happened? Next thing I know, she's flipping her hair back like she's in some damn shampoo commercial and glances at me with those judgmental eyes. I can already tell she's got a problem. The kind that won't be solved with a group therapy session or a cup of herbal tea. But, hey, karma has a way of hitting back harder than a wrecking ball and just as she struts away, she leaves her car in gear. You can guess where this is going, right? My poor car becomes a sacrificial lamb in her circus of arrogance. Her car rolls back like it's auditioning for a fast and furious stunt. And bam! Collision central right there at the gas pumps. The loud crunch echoes through the air and suddenly everyone's eyes are on us. People are gasping and I'm just standing there looking at the mess that is now my once pristine ride. So this is how my day starts. A collision with Karen the self-proclaimed road queen. Buckle up, folks, because it's about to get crazier than a cat riding a skateboard. All right, so picture this. My car is bruised, her car is feeling a bit tender, and there we are, Karen and yours truly, about to engage in a verbal showdown that could put a UFC match to shame. I take a deep breath trying to keep my cool because, you know, anger management classes are for wimps, right? I stroll over, hands in my pockets, giving her the benefit of the doubt. Maybe she's got some insurance up her sleeve. Or maybe she's going to pull out a magic wand and fix this mess. Wishful thinking. I know. Hey, lady, you mind explaining what the hell just happened back there? I start. Keeping it cool, or at least trying to. And guess what? The Karen glare kicks in full force. She gives me that condescending once. Over. Like she's evaluating a trash can and deciding it's not worthy of a recyclable. Oh, please, like it's my fault your piece of junk can't handle a little love tap. Maybe you should learn to park properly next time. She fires back, all attitude and sad. Now, I ain't want to let that kind of insult slide, but I'm trying to be civil here. Look, lady, my car might not be a damn luxury sedan, but it sure as hell doesn't deserve this. And maybe if you could control your vehicle like a responsible adult, we wouldn't be in this mess. She scoffs, waving her hand like she's shooing away a fly. A responsible adult. Please, I don't have time for this. Call your insurance or whatever and let me get on with my fabulous day. Oh, it's on like Donkey Kong now. I can feel the rage bubbling, but I bite my tongue. For now. Insurance info exchanged, tempers flaring, and as she struts away with the grace of a flamingo on a tightrope, I can't help but think, this day just keeps getting better and better. 
So there I am, standing in the aftermath of the Karen hurricane, holding my phone like it's a lifeline. I dial up the good old cops, thinking they'll swoop in, do their thing, and justice will prevail. Oh, sweet, naive me. As I'm chatting with Officer Friendly on the line, Karen catches wind of my 911 action. Panic sets in, and she morphs into a gazelle on adrenaline. Picture this, a woman in high heels attempting a sprint. It's a sight to behold, and by sight, I mean a disaster waiting to happen. The sirens wail in the distance as she glances over her shoulder, her eyes wide with that I've been caught look. But instead of admitting defeat and facing the music, Karen decides she's the next Vin Diesel in the Fast and Furious franchise. In a move that would make any action movie director cringe, she hops into her slightly dented chariot, revs the engine like she's auditioning for NASCAR, and peels out of that gas station like her life depends on it. Spoiler alert, it doesn't. Here's the plot twist. The universe has a sense of humor. Just as she's making her grand escape, the real heroes arrive. The cops, I point in the direction of the disappearing Corinne. Mobile and officer-friendly looks at me like, You've got to be kidding. What happens next is straight out of a comedy sketch. Karen, in her bid for freedom, forgets the basics of driving. As she swerves onto the road, she fails to notice the approaching police cruiser. Cue the dramatic slow-motion collision. The sound of metal meeting metal rings in the air as Curran's car does a little dance with the cop car. The universe, it seems, has a fondness for poetic justice. Officers spill out of the police car. Karen looks like she's seen a ghost, and I'm standing there with a front row seat to this circus of chaos. The cherry on top. Officer Friendly shoots me a look that says, You called us for this? Oh, the joys of suburban drama. And just like that, the Karen escapade takes an unexpected turn. So, there's Karen, now officially starring in her own real-life cop drama. The scene unfolds as the officers wrangle her out of her battered car, like they're reeling in a particularly stubborn fish. And let me tell you, it's a glorious sight. The woman who thought she could outrun the law, now caught in the snare of justice. As they slap the cuffs on her, Officer Friendly gives me a nod like we're in on some secret joke. The other officers, though, they're not holding back. They're giving Karen a piece of their mind, a roasting hotter than a summer barbecue. Nice try. Speed racer, thought you could outrun us, huh? One cop chuckles, probably enjoying the unexpected twist in his mundane day. Karen, though, is doing her best indignant act. This is ridiculous. I demand to speak to your supervisor. You people have no idea who you're dealing with. The cops exchange amused glances, and one of them deadpans. Yeah, yeah, tell it to the judge, drama queen. As they lead her away, Karen shoots me a death glare. I can practically hear her thinking of a thousand creative ways to curse my existence, but hey, I'm not one to let a good story slip away, and I press those charges like my life depends on it. So, Karen's headed for a cozy stay in the slammer. Justice served, right? But here's the kicker. As the officers drive away with her in tow, I catch a glimpse of karma grinning like the Cheshire Cat. The universe has a way of balancing the scales, and Karen's got a hefty dose of comeuppance on her plate. As the dust settles, I can't help but revel in the sweet taste of victory. But something tells me this tale is far from over. So buckle up, readers, because we're in for a ride. And Karen's got a front. Row seat to her own downfall. 